Sean Taylor, the hardest hitter in the draft. When you think about Sean, he was always ready to go. That's what I remember. First time I met him, like, let's go. When I seen him get drafted, I laughed inside. All you heard was the sound of his helmet coming across somebody. When he showed up to the party, he was going to make sure that <laughs> he busted in the door. I was like, oh my goodness. If you had a different color jersey on, he was going to inflict some pain. The game is never over when that guy is on the field. Sean meant a lot to, you know, to us all. I think one of the things that I took from him passing, it was just like, you know, he, he, he honestly showed me that, you know, you can't take life for granted. His presence and his energy was, uh, it was a fire right there. And like I said, I just instantly knew it that he had an emotional connection to the game that most people didn't have. You gotta realize, I drove my car to work passing him riding a bike. All right, he rode his bike to work every day. I guess how different he was. He did never want anybody to outwork him. You might have had more talent than him, which most didn't, but he wasn't gonna let you outwork him. And I think that's what made him different. I remember that they said he was gonna draft a kid named Sean Taylor, and I knew about him from the University of Miami, but you think you know until you see him in person. <laughs> and when we drafted him in the first OTAs, I was like, oh my goodness, you know, this kid is uh, amazing. And, and as another high draft pick, I was like, man, I used to be like that. And I felt like that was the first time that I had been around a player who was just, you know, in a long time that I seen that was just special. We called it organized chaos. All right. When he gets to the pile, the ball always magically pops out when he makes it to the ball. And it just show you how big and strong he was. Like, it's just crazy. And if he ever got his hand on the ball, he turned it to the running back. I remember sitting in Greg Williams' office with Smooth and, you know, and he's like, what do you two Yahoo's want? He's like, coach, we need to talk to you about something. He's like, you got to play Sean. You got to start Sean. He got to learn to play call and play call. I was like, coach, Sean don't even know anything, but just put him out there on the field. And obviously he ended up playing, ended up starting, and he was the best player on the field since he, you know, the day when he started. So It's funny, man. I watched him every day just make plays. And like the guy he was in the locker room, when we talked about T-Pain and some of his his fondest, you know, uh, you know, musicians that he liked, he was not that guy on the field. He didn't have no rap for none of that stuff. All you heard was the sound of his helmet coming across somebody nine times out of 10. Buffalo Bills lining up. Washington has only 10 players on defense. We doubt he is the guy who's expected to replace Sean Taylor in the lineup. He's on the sideline. I remember it. Um, it was, um, although there was 10 men on the field, he was with us. That energy in the stadium, wow, <laughs> gives me chills thinking about it now. That energy in the stadium that day was just, it was just different. We, we all were playing with heavy hearts. But it was like, that's what Sean would have wanted us to do, to be out there. And he was out there with us. And uh, he was a, a loving son to two loving parents. He was a loving father. You know, uh, he was a loving friend. Me and Dan Snyder actually was the last two to talk to him. We was going to Green Bay, uh, pulled into the parking lot. I got out the car and Sean was walking out of the park and me, him and Dan standing at the back of my car and we was talking about the fact he said he was going home and me and me, him and Dan kind of, you know, sh shook hands, hugged each other and, you know, like nothing else was normal was going on. So, and anytime I come in the parking lot, I think about it. I think about that last conversation and all he could talk about was just going to see Baby Jacket. That was his thing to go see his baby girl. The way the community responded and the way they they came and supported, you know, the love, you know, you saw people crying on the news, the flowers, I mean, I would say thank you because his last play was defending his family, the legacy he left was is, is, has been inspiring to me and so many others and to not take things for granted. Thank you, brother. 
Thank you for giving me the privilege to enjoy a piece of this life with you. But one thing we do know about this life is not forever. So the only thing we take with us is the people that we share it with. So thank you for giving me a chance to share a piece of your life and a piece of mine with you.